What if your Hashimoto's or thyroid condition was triggered by a nasty infection? And what if treating that infection actually changed the way that your thyroid functioned forever? I'm Jordan Reasoner, and today I'm going to share an interview clip that I did with Dr. Isabella Wentz, an author and leading expert on the root causes behind thyroid disease. And in this clip, she literally blows my mind with some specific triggers for thyroid disease, including some well-known infections you've probably heard of, but actually how to treat them to improve your thyroid. Let's listen in. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really glad that you brought that up because it is a two-way street. And, you know, really the focus of my work and digging to try to figure out what the underlying root cause of my condition was has led me to um, really looking at the gut as a source of, you know, where it all starts as far as thyroid imbalance. And there's not a lot of information on this in the literature yet. It's it's popping up every now and then in PubMed. And, you know, I love to scour that that website and download all the articles whenever I can. But what really got me started on finding this information and finding the gut and thyroid connection as far as, you know, the gut impacting the thyroid would be um, an Italian study that was done in people with celiac disease and Hashimoto's. So there was um, a group of people who had both celiac disease and Hashimoto's. They were not on a gluten-free diet yet. Um, they were found to have, some of them had subclinical hypothyroidism, so their thyroid was beginning to fail, and they were also positive for thyroid antibodies. Um, once researchers put these people on a gluten-free diet, 20% of them were able to get into remission from Hashimoto's. So it was amazing because their thyroid antibodies went away and their thyroid function returned to normal. So they no longer had, you know, an impaired thyroid function where they were fatigued and sluggish. Their thyroid was able to pick it, pick their production back up because it was no longer autoimmune attack. So that was sort of when I started my research and I thought, wow, this is amazing. So even food can make a difference. And what is it about this food that can cause um, this issue? And this led me to the work of Dr. Alessio Fasano, who is... Um, you know, world-renowned gastroenterologist who really has worked on celiac and the autoimmune connection and the gut connection. And, you know, what Dr. Fasano has found is that there are three things that need to be present for an autoimmune condition to develop. And those are the, having the right kind of genes. So, you know, we do know that there is a genetic susceptibility to Hashimoto's. Um, having the right kind of triggers in place so triggers have been identified, so different viruses, um, iodine excess, different types of toxins, as well as stress, um, bacteria, all kinds of different infectious agents have been identified as triggers for Hashimoto's, as well as having the third piece would be the intestinal permeability, or as we like to call it, leaky gut. And this was really amazing, um, groundbreaking research, because what Dr. Fasano demonstrated is that when you remove one of these, um, basically autoimmunity will go into remission. So, you know, I knew that I couldn't change my genes. That's something I was born with, right? There was nothing I was going to be able to do about that. And I looked at a lot of my um, triggers and trying to eliminate sources of excess iodine, uh, eliminating toxins out of my life, eliminating fluoride. But what um, I really thought would be a really great focus for myself as well as for everybody was looking at intestinal permeability. And so what were the underlying causes that may cause a person to have this intestinal permeability? Of course, one of them would be celiac disease. And that was very nicely demonstrated in the study I just talked about from Italy where uh, gluten was removed and the person no longer had leaky gut and they were able to go into remission. Now, there are other studies that have implicated gut pathogens. So H. pylori has been implicated in Hashimoto's. So there are specific, um, basically the way that autoimmunity works, it's a theory called molecular mimicry. That's kind of our working theory right now with it, is basically that when the immune system finds a bacteria or a virus or any kind of other pathogen that's not supposed to be in our bodies, it, it takes a snapshot of the protein structure of that pathogen and then trains other immune cells to, to attack, you know, based on what that pathogen looks like. 
And if for some reason, you know, the immune system gets confused or if the pathogen looks a little bit like um, part of our anatomy, be it the thyroid, be it the gut lining, whatnot, then the immune system will attack that as well. So this is uh, H. pylori, a bacteria commonly found in the, in, in the stomach, can be something that can cause molecular mimicry and cross-react with thyroid cells, as well as um, another one is Yersinia. And this is another gut infection that can cause um, thyroid destruction. So um, in the research, there have been cases of people going into remission based on treating those types of gut infections. Wow, that's actually new information that I haven't heard before, that H. pylori could could result in some cross-reactivity there. That's fantastic information because so many, I mean, that's one of the most common infections out there, right? You know, absolutely. And it's it's something that, you know, one person might be skeptical and say, well, I, my uncle had H. pylori and he never had, you know, he never had Hashimoto's, but we have to think about it. It's It's a combination. So your uncle maybe have might have different genes than you do. So he might have different genetic um, things that get turned on or activated when you're, he's exposed to that trigger than you will. So um, one, and this is kind of a tangent, but there was a study done in people who received fecal transplants from, um, from healthy donors without autoimmune disease for, um, for C. diff. And when these people received fecal transplants, a certain number of them actually developed rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune condition even though the donors didn't have it and the recipients didn't have it beforehand, but it was, you know, that combination of the genes and whatever was in um, whatever bacteria or viruses or whatnot pathogens lived in that gut that, you know, made that interaction happen. 